UK inflation rose again in May, following on from April's 40-year highs, with fuel prices at record levels and food prices seeing the biggest increase in over a decade. Many households are having to make difficult choices. And there's a warning that there's worse to come later in the autumn. Well, our business correspondent Juliet Mann has the details. Juliet. Thank you. Well, the market consensus was spot on. Uh, inflation pushed to a fresh 40-year high of 9.1% in May. And it's expected to rise further still amid the cost of living crisis, hitting 11% as soon as the autumn. Now, most of that due to price rises for food and non-alcoholic drinks compared with falls in those things a year ago. Prices of dog food, milk and butter are rising the fastest. In fact, grocery inflation has hit a 13-year high at 8.3%. The average UK food bill has risen by $464 a year. And you know what? That's more than $100 above the numbers reported in April. In fact, the UK's grocery trade body said the price rises in the UK could hit 15% this summer. It's the highest level in more than 20 years. And high inflation could last into the middle of next year. Now, last week, the Bank of England raised a few eyebrows when they only moved the base rate up by 25 basis points, while at the same time saying they would act forcefully on inflation if necessary. Just a little reminder, the Bank of England's target rate for inflation is 2%. We're at, yep, 9.1%. Well, Nina Skiro is chief executive at the CEBR. Maybe she can help us make head and tail of all this. And Nina, why is the UK in this vicious cycle with inflation making the pound weaker, pushing up the price of imports, creating even more inflationary pressure, and we go round again? The UK certainly finds itself in an unenviable position, but to be fair, a number of other Western economies are grappling with a similar situation. We have similarly seen in the U.S. record-breaking inflation figures and the Fed there having to take even more decisive action than the Bank of England has. Europe is also facing much higher than, um, than target inflation. So it is really a combination of factors that are impacting much of the, the world. The part of it comes from the sharp uptick in energy prices, which have an obvious impact on the cost of transport, but also have a trickle-down impact on the cost of a lot of other goods and services, given that energy prices are an input cost for so many sectors. You've also just mentioned food price inflation, which is resulting partially from the Russia-Ukraine conflict and the fact that those two countries are quite big exporters of various food products. You, you, you talk about the, the U.S. Fed uh, being bolder. Do you think that the Bank of England is then under pressure to raise rates faster? Some were surprised that in their last meeting, the MPC, the Monetary Policy Committee, only hiked by 25 points rather than taking more decisive action. Um, there is quite a difficult situation in the moment in a sense that not only is the economy facing high inflation, they are also facing low, in, in fact, at the moment, negative rates of economic growth. So the Bank of England is clearly trying to balance um, those two sort of opposing goals. But I certainly wouldn't be surprised to see at least one more and very possibly more hikes uh, before the end of this year. This rate of inflation could be fatal, couldn't it, for dozens if not hundreds uh, of businesses. And there's pressure on the employers uh, in particular to, to increase wages. That's right, especially as despite all of the other sort of adverse economic readings, the UK labour market is actually still in a pretty robust position. So there is a lot of pressure on employers to fight for the relatively scarce uh, workers and in fact to try keeping the workers they already or they already have and this is coming on top of high input prices and also we've seen a number of pretty broad-based tax hikes in the UK so it's absolutely fair to say that a lot of businesses especially SMEs are being hit by quite a lot of pressures all at once. And what about you and me and all of our viewers because consumers you know we're, we're on high alert too I mean what, what impact do you expect this is going to have on consumer confidence? 
Consumer confidence is already hitting record lows. And in fact, in recent months, we've seen drops in consumer confidence that are equal to, if not worse, than the drops we saw at the beginning of the COVID pandemic. So I think that really tells us how starkly households are being impacted and how seriously everybody's taking this. And we are expecting consumer confidence to remain subdued along with business confidence, in fact. And there is already data on how consumers are adjusting. So the most, one of the most common things households can do is cut back spending on non-essential items. So cut back their discretionary spending, which of course creates challenges for a number of consumer facing industries and the economy as a whole, while others are trying to shop around more or dip into savings, of course, assuming that they have any savings to dip into, which isn't the case for everyone.